All right. In this video, we derive the multivariate normal distribution from the maximum entropy principle, just like we did for univariate normal distribution. Okay, let's start. So first, suppose we have a multivariate density function, density, uh, probability density, uh, where x is a n-dimensional random vector. Okay. And actually, this will turn out to be a normal distribution. But uh, anyway, let's pretend we don't know what this distribution is yet. And also assume that we already know the mean vector, uh, which is this, uh, again, uh, n-dimensional vector, the mean vector, and the covariance matrix, which is uh, n by n matrix. Of course, it's symmetric and positive definite. So we need to specify the entire covariance, variance covariance matrix because uh, just specifying the diagonal elements, or that means the variances, we can't uh, specify a normal distribution completely. Because, for example, if we have two distributions like this or like this, so they are different distributions, but if we just look at variances, so in the x-axis we have this variance, in y-axis we have this variance, uh, in, this in, in this left distribution, and in the right distribution, if we just look at the variance on x and y-axis, we have the same variances, but this, di so this is same as this, this may be same as this, but these two distributions are clearly different. So in order to distinguish these two, we have to specify the covariance between these two uh, variables. Okay. So assuming these two information are given, what is this density function? So the way to determine this is to maximize the entropy. And as usual, entropy is defined as this. Uh, rho log rho dx. So this integral is over entire n-dimensional space. So this is entropy. And in addition to these two conditions, we also have the normalization condition. So we add, okay, so this is Lagrangian. Uh, we have undetermined multiplier alpha. Uh, this is for constraining the normalization constant. Okay, so rho dx minus 1. So this, if we integrate this density function for over entire space, then it should be equal to 1. So that's why we have this constraint. Now we add these constraints, but uh, we deal with each component of this vector or this matrix. Okay. So for that, we introduce beta i for each element of this mu. So that is x i. So this is i-th component. So this x is a vector, x1 up to xn. So this i-th element is this x i. And so the mean of this component should be equal to uh, i-th element of mu. And we apply this constraint for each element, so we have to take the sum. And similarly, for the covariance, we have double sum, uh, ij and let's say gamma ij. And for the covariance, we have xi minus mu i times xj minus mu j and rho x dx. And this should be equal to the component, the element, the ij element of the covariance matrix. Okay, so this one, uh, the elements are sigma ij, lowercase. Okay, so now we want to maximize this Lagrangian with respect to rho, just like we did for univariate case. And the way we differentiate this Lagrangian is uh, almost identical to the universe case, so I will just 
write the result. Okay, so this is functional differentiation. And for this, we get negative uh, log rho. And for this, uh, from here, we negative 1, negative alpha. So from this, uh, from this entropy term, we get this part. And from this normalization term, we get this alpha. And from this, we have uh, what we have? Uh, sum of uh, i, beta i, and uh, xi. And from this covariance term, we get negative 1 over 2, uh, double sum, and gamma ij, xi minus mu i, xj minus mu j. Okay, so this is the functional derivative of the Lagrangian. Now let's put this equal to zero and solve for rho. Then we have this. That is exponential of negative one, negative alpha, and all of this. And this. And gamma ij, xi mu i, xj mu j. Uh, this. Now, if you look at this term carefully, this is a dot product between two vectors, beta and x, right? Or we can write beta transpose times x. So beta is a vector, x is a vector. So it, it's a, in vector notation, this summation is like this. And also for this, this is a quadratic form. And if we write a new, if we define a new matrix gamma, whose ij element is gamma ij, then this quadratic form can be written as x minus mu, so this is vector difference transpose gamma, and x minus mu. Okay. So we have uh, x here and x here. So we, we have two terms containing x. Uh, so we want to uh, complete the square for x. And all of the constants that do not involve x are squashed into this constant c. And after all, I'll just uh, write the result. Uh, this, after all, the completed square becomes this. x minus mu, uh, what is it? Uh, that should be gamma inverse uh, beta transpose gamma and x minus mu plus gamma inverse beta. Okay. Uh, to check this, just expand this and uh, you will have this term and this term plus some constants all, all are actually here. So we have this constant and undetermined constants are uh, this, uh, gamma and beta and c. So next we want to determine these constants somehow. So first let's determine this constant c. This is determined from the normalization constraint. So if we integrate this over entire space, this becomes one. So if we integrate this exponential function for entire space, uh, and if this that should be equal to one, then this c should be, uh, so this c should be uh, this, one over square root of two pi to the power of n, and the determinant of gamma inverse. So if we set like this, then this rho, the density function is normalized. This is a standard uh, result from, uh, from the Gaussian integral, which uh, I have another video for that. And next, we want to determine the value of beta. So that is determined from this uh, co uh, mean constraint for the mean. So instead of uh, element-wise expression, we just integrate a vector uh, uh, by 
multiplying the density and integrate over all the space and we should get this mu, a vector, right? So that's the mean and from this condition, so if we integrate, so substituting this c into, into this density and multiply by x, uh, we just comp compute each element uh, one by one and uh, we get this mu and that results in this mu plus uh, mu minus actually uh, gamma inverse beta so this should be equal to mu so we can cancel this and multiply by gamma from the left we get beta equal to zero vector so beta is zero so now this term is gone so it's almost like the normal distribution already so let's write it again so gamma inverse determinant exponential x minus mu gamma x minus mu this uh, negative one over two of course so if we integrate this uh, to calculate the the variance covariance of this matrix so we integrate this and by x minus mu, x minus mu transpose and rho. So this is a matrix dx. That should be the given covariance matrix. But we already know how to integrate this. Uh, you know, this is a Gaussian integral. So this should be equal to uh, gamma inverse. So this integral turns out to be gamma inverse. Gamma is this one, okay? So this gamma inverse should be equal to sigma. So that means uh, gamma is equal to sigma inverse. So it's the inverse matrix of the covariance matrix. So after all, we get rho of x equals to uh, square root of two pi to the power of n and uh, sigma determinant of sigma covariance matrix and one over two x minus mu transpose sigma inverse x minus mu and that's it which is the multivariate multivariate normal distribution and that's it so there's nothing too tricky about this uh, very similar to a uh, univariate case so it should be not too difficult if anything, maybe the this step from here to here, completing the square for x, maybe a little bit uh, complicated. But if you get used to it, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, that's it for this video. See you later.